But if you want to stick around for a little q and I'll answer all your burning questions to the best of my abilities, and we'll go there. But before we go, thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. I know sometimes I see a little bit gruff. I just got a lot of things to do today, so I'm trying to get things moving. Uh, usually I'm a little bit... Uh, <laughs> A little bit uh, not so rough around the edges. All right, that's what's going on. Let's go into some Q&A. Ooh. Rob is Dan. Dan is everybody. Some of us. So, yeah, Digital Asset News stands for Dan. Most people just call me Dan, but Rob's fine. Ari Piper, we just had a nice little meetup yesterday at Union here in El Paso. What's up, buddy? The NCOA will be part of your concession. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's the day the day I got, I got modded. I got a lot of mods. I think we're okay for a while, but I'm watching you. Oh, no. Buffering. Sorry, man. Amazon Web Service. How free is free is always a trap. It's always a trap. That's true. Watch that deep dive video and you'll understand it. So the trap is, well, I will say for Satoshi Miles, it's, they really depend on you, I think. I'm not for sure. I haven't had the people on my show. But I think it's because it's all affiliate links. And, of course, they want you to kind of use those. You don't have to use those. And it's pretty cool. I mean, you can just uh, start to accumulate Satoshis, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Michael Payne says there's a free and a paid version. There's a, there's a premium version for Sweatcoin, but... It just doubles your, your steps. So if you want to do that, I guess. All right. I got 168. Interview on it. That's never going to happen. Oh, it could happen. Who knows? The never say never. Is it free? Yes, it is free. <laughs> uh, they, you know, yeah, I don't trust anybody anymore. Yeah, I think Ben would like that. Hey, everybody just, everybody shot at Ben and tell him to use that S Miles app because he loves the, he loves that stuff. Paul Barone Network Rules. What? That's slouch. Let me tell you something. So there's a link. I, I got to tell you, I'm going to say link in the description more than I say I got to tell you. There's a link in the description. If you scroll down for the YouTube channel recommendations, there's a bunch that I, I watch as much as I possibly can. Uh, Coin Bureau, Best Answers in the Cryptoverse, you know those guys. And there's Paul Barone, good guy. And there's another one I added just today. It's called Valuetainment. It's, uh, it's great. One of the videos they did, they talked about the uh, incoming real estate crash. And a lot of the data points that he talks about makes a lot of sense. And I can see it and I agree with him. So that's a new one to the list. Then Crypto Stash and of course, our man Simon Dixon. So check those guys out. Uh, they're all really good, and they're not based on hopium and craziness. So that's why I watch them. <laughs> that's what's, that's, that's it. All right. Kevin, shilling start again. So let's define what shilling is, shall we? Because I'm getting really sick of that word, even though I was a self-proclaimed cream of shills. <laughs> shilling definition. I would say promotion would be better. Oh, well, shilling is the former monetary unit of the United Kingdom. That's what you're talking about. Ah, here we go. So let's take a look at this. So shilling is a hustler or con artist who tries to convince other people to buy something or, th or think something is great shilling without actually ever owning it. They have ulterior motives for their actions, usually because they are the actual seller or have something to gain if the product sells well. So here's the thing. Uh, I have nothing to gain. If you go there and get S miles or whatever else. Now, I will say this. If you want to say that I'm a, I'm a shill for Bitcoin because I talk about it, well, I, that still doesn't make any sense. Because, yeah, I own it. And I'm super biased on this channel. Most things I talk about, you may notice, are things that I personally own. And that's just the truth. So I use those things. I like those things. And I would like you to use those things. Where's the problem? I tell you there are affiliate links and we go from there. <sighs> yeah, I just saw this. They're going to go from negative to positive, which is crazy. What do you think about the EU central bank raising rising rates the first time in 11 years? I think it was, it's about time. Let's just be honest. And then also, let's take a look at the app. 
inflation. Did you also know that this is free? So there's this app. It's app.trueflation.com. And there's also a link in the description where you can find this. I love this because it has 30 different data points, 30 different data points, and it uses Chainlink as an oracle to pull an outside data into the blockchain and then give you what they believe is the right inflation rate. And they were way higher than what the government thinks. But what I thought was interesting right here, and they're actually going to, this is just US stuff, but I had on Stefan, actually, you know what? So if you go up here, right here, it says keep an eye on inflation. And there's the app, the website. Here's the FAQ video. It was me and the CEO, Stefan, and we talked about how they get those 30 data points, how they're branching off into EU and things like that. Um, that will be an interesting question right now as we see inflation actually go down. This actually makes me pretty bullish on the crypto spot because uh, on July 27th, when the Fed comes out and raises rates, which they will, I'm wondering if they're gonna use current data or the old CPI data, which was from, you know, was that 13th of July, which is actually retroactive. So for me, EU central banks raising rates, it's about time. That's, uh, that's all I can say. Ah, grow the beard. Nah, I just didn't have time to trim it up today. Because if I, if I really let it grow, it looks like a look like, uh, skinny Santa Claus. It looks ridiculous. <laughs> I am a grandpa. That's the truth. How many products do you sell on Amazon? I, I, I tailor them down now because right now is not the greatest time. You can sell on Amazon, but the best time is Q4. Uh, that's when uh, holiday shopping hits. So, you know, we'll probably ramp up. Really not that much. A bunch of gas caps and yoga mats and stupid stuff like that. I'm actually looking to get out of Amazon because you gotta really gotta think about it. Like the margins are fine, but they're but they raise the rates all the time. It's kind of a pain. I think it's not as it's not as fun as it used to be. Because it was fun just to do it, but these days I'm like, ugh, just a drag. Let's see. Hey Rob, do you think Matic can come down to 31 cents? We see Bitcoin if we can. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yes. Hello, Sean. Thanks for signing up. Well, William does. That's thanks, William. You do it right. Offering a take is someone listening to Zora, but chilling is not what you do. Always do it. But newsflash. No, it's not. Look, this is my favorite audience. I got to tell you something. When the next bull run comes around, I know I'm going to get a boatload of, uh, of views, but it's going to suck because it's going to be a bunch of people who just want to be the Dogecoin, the next Dogecoin millionaire. And they're going to say the dumbest things in the comments. And I got to put up with that nonsense because you can't be a jerk or you can't use, you got to be diplomatic as much as possible for YouTube. I hate that part, honestly. <laughs> but uh, they say the dumbest things. And then the, and the people like, like, People like us who've been here for, for a, quite a long time are like, ugh, we just got to roll the eyes and just kind of deal with it. People will get it, but, uh, you know, it'll just be a transition. Uh, <laughs> I'm six minutes behind, so if you get to answer that, would be nice. What was the question? It looks weird, I'll tell you that. Ah, Rebabu. Hey, Rob, I invested $700 with Binance and staked them. Okay. I know I should get a cold storage, but for this much investment, should I go for it or should I wait so that I can buy this with book profit? So did you, did you stake the, your Binance Smart Chain with them? If that's the case, then, you know, that's the way you can do it. I don't, I have a little bit of, of BNB just for uh, transactions on my MetaMask wallet when I want to do different things, but that's about it. I'm not a good person for that one. But in all honesty, everything that you can potentially take off, uh, take off the exchanges, there is a caveat there. Let's say, for example, you're buying $25 worth of Ethereum. Would it behoove you to take that Ethereum off of a, an exchange where the ETH fees are like $5? every time and put it into your cold storage? No, probably not. You probably wanna wait a little bit because the fees are ridiculous. Now, there's some exchanges that don't charge a lot of fees and right now the fees aren't crazy high. So you could probably get away with it, but it's really just depends on what you wanna do. I can't give you financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but for me, when I look at these things and the fees, I'm like, 
if it's 25 bucks and the fee's five bucks, forget it. I'll just keep it on there. Will I lose everything? Yeah, probably. Or maybe, but uh, maybe I'll just accumulate a little bit in three or four weeks and then take it off every three or four weeks. It's so whatever you want to do. Are you still a fan of Theta T Fuel? I am. I, I like that company. I like where things are going. I mean, hey, uh, I still have a channel over there on Theta, but uh, you know, we'll see if that's the next big thing. Hello. What's your take on Solana? Solana's, I'm beginning to get a lot more bullish on Ethereum after that. The news report on uh, those ZK rollups, whatever they, ZK EVM rollup or something like that for Polygon. And how it's uh, hopefully going to lead to greater uh, scalability and reduce the fees. Now, the testnet rolls out. Testnet, I think, is actually already there. And by the end of the month, no, I think it's, uh, yeah, testnet's already there. And if they can pull it off and it does what it says it does, then Ethereum becomes a bigger juggernaut than what it is right now. So Solana, I mean, it can go up. Market cap isn't that big. But, um, you know, how much can they actually take? So the question is, do you think Ethereum is going to be the 60, 70, 80 percent? And then the rest of the layer ones like the Cardano's and the Solana's and the Avalanche's are going to just pick up the scraps? Or do you think there's other, something else that could do pretty well? I don't know. One thing I don't like about Solana, and you can grill me in the comments, but uh, how many times did they shut down? How many times have they had, you know, DDoS attacks and things like that? How many times did they ask the uh, validators to reset? That's a security issue, in my, my opinion. And of course, people will say, but no, 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 it was a slowdown. It wasn't a shutdown, whatever. Uh, it just makes me concerned, right? I'm not going to sit here and be a fan of something when I'm not. Uh, do you hold any Elrond? I do not. Do you think XRP is going to win the case? I do. I don't think it's going to be like nobody really ever wins these types of cases where they come out like, ah, I told you 100%. I think there'll be some give and take. I'm just glad that they didn't settle. And I think they don't want to settle. I think uh, it was a it was a report. Brad Garlinghouse came out and said they, they've spent over $100 million in legal fees to fight this case over the last two years. And they want a decision. If they settle in court, outside of court, then that doesn't do anything to set precedent for the next case that the SEC tries to pull, which they're going to pull with these other ones right now. So if they can take them all the way and the judge gives a ruling, which they're already $100 million deep, and cash, let's see what the ruling is. I think uh, I think they're going to pull that out, the, but it depends on the degree of which they actually come out as a winner. Rob, when you come in with a coin, I already got a coin. It's called Tomato Coin, and it's worthless. And I did airdrops to everybody who's in my D, in my D new stake pool. <laughs> a worthless coin. I don't know. So. Zachary James, I just saw this uh, from Eternal Wallet. Eternal Wallet looks pretty cool. I need to, Dad, can I, Dan, can I connect with your ADA stake pool? First of all, if you didn't know, there is a link in the description, and it looks like this: Dan Cardano stake pool, ba 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 ba, and that'll take you to uh, a web page which is on Dan Teaches Crypto, which talks about. Uh, what a stake pool is, difference between proof of work and proof of stake, how to stake, how to take your Cardano off of exchanges. And you know how to stake with me. You can stake with anybody you want to. But uh, what I should really do, Zach, is I should update that video to include all the different wallets that are out there. Because right now it's just, I only have Daedalus, Yoroi, and Ada Lite. I'm not a big fan of Yoroi, just not. But the other ones are pretty good. Uh, so yeah, you can, you should be able to stake it if it's a Cardano-based wallet, which is what I saw. So yes. I just don't know exactly the uh, the steps one, two, and three. The biggest problem with ETH is when it's busy. It's super expensive. Yeah, and that's the problem. So that's why these ZK rollups where it's a layer two solution, think of like lightning, you know, lightning on the Bitcoin network, layer two hovers above, but it's not just one or two. It's like hundreds of transactions that they can do a layer two solution and then they can record it on the blockchain. And that's going to speed up a lot of things and hopefully reduce the fees. That's the big, that's the big push. Ah, the fruit roll-ups. Yes, I've heard of these. They sound delicious and fast. We, we need these in that pool yours. That's right, Ivan. I like that NFT, Ivan. It's very nice. So we were talking about this last night. Bitcoin and Mt. Gox. There's a time frame. 
I always forget. Let me pull it up. Look at this. So there was a time frame, and we, we covered this a uh, week and a half ago or so. So Mount Gox Curtis on a correspondent day, July 6th. And this is by the Mount Gox rehab process. The attorneys, uh, Nobuaki Kobayashi, nailed it. Okay. This is the word salad. Tell me if you think this is going to happen and when it's going to happen. The following discussions with the court and in accordance with the rehabilitation plan, which is what all the people that lost their Bitcoin in the hack in Mount Gox in 2014, the rehabilitation trustee, people that are overseeing this whole process, plans to set the assignment. And the assignment is them going to be able to give you back your one of three things, your Bitcoin or Bitcoin cash or just straight cash. There is those three options. Restriction reference period from approximately the end of August. Restriction reference period from approximately the end of August this year until all or part of the repayments made as initial initial repayments is completed for safe and secure repayments. When I'm reading that, I'm like, I don't think they're going to give it all to you by the end of August. I think it talks about initial repayments until all or part of the repayments. And again, you have to remember, where does it say here? Mount Gox free trust and credit choose to choose between Bitcoin cash or Bitcoin cash. Just so how do they, you know, then it really comes down to how do they, they, they go about and uh, quantify that. And well, you had, you know, if it was, let's say you had a hundred Bitcoin, right? Would you take a hundred Bitcoin or would you take, or would you take the cash equivalent of that? It depends. And then for me, the, the bigger question is, well, if you get a hundred Bitcoin back, would you sell it? A lot of people say, no, I'd never sell it. Yeah, you'd never sell it. But guess what? You've never had eight years of Bitcoin pent up. And some of you can say, well, I have, Rob. I would. I'm telling you right now, God is my witness. If I had eight years of Bitcoin held up and I had a thousand Bitcoin or whatever else it was, you better believe I'm selling a little bit because I've been waiting eight damn years <laughs> to get that. And I will put that in other assets. Just saying. That's just me. Would I sell it all? No, I wouldn't. But there, you got to imagine there's some people who are like, I'm going to sell some. I could be wrong. Sound off in the comment section, but that's how I see things. Blah. I think it's it. <laughs> Except for this one. Bull runs when the, when the real shillers show up. Yes, exactly. I promote, I promote things like tax software and uh, Roth IRAs and stuff like that. Now, it is true... You know, I was talking for a long time about Voyager and I was talking a long time about Celsius, but when the facts change, I change. And that's why when I figured it out, June 12th with the video out, take it all off Celsius, then they lock down withdrawals nine hours later. So the same thing about Voyager on June 22nd. July 1st, they stopped, they shot it all down. I don't know. <sighs> you know what? The nagging wife causes me to sell. My wife said the same thing. Uh, early December when we were trying to buy that house in in, uh, in Puerto Rico. I was like, I don't really want to sell because I think there's going to be these things called extended cycles. I think things are going to do pretty well. It's like, you really, really got to sell. We got to sell some to afford this house. Smartest thing. Everything happens for a reason. Packing said, do you hold the keys in a crypto Roth IRA? No, you don't. And that's one of the problems with that. But the one thing I will say is that this is that in a Roth IRA, you can't put your life savings all at once. In America, you have a, you have a, a max amount, 5,000, 6,000, or 7,000, even with a backdoor Roth IRA. So the people that put their life savings in Celsius, that's gone. But for me, seven grand ain't going to kill me. Just saying. But that's why I have these rules up. Have you seen these rules? All these rules. So, it's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam. Don't trust, verify. Don't leave anything on exchanges. 
no leverage and take profits. These are my rules. I don't have to be your rules. That's just what I try to live. I try to live by the best of my abilities. Am I a hundred percent now? Right now I do have some crypto on exchanges. It's true, but I will take them all off. Any update on Simon Yu coming on? Yeah, it's going to be Friday, but I don't know if, if Simon's going to be a part of the DCA show or if we're just going to do one separately because Ben is still on vacation, sipping, as he says, the daiquiris. <laughs> daiquiris. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, see, and this is, Francis says, Elon finally woke up. Anyone who buys Bitcoin is a melee or to crypto far more excited about constellation dog than something nobody uses for nothing. They just say, buy and buy. That's what a lot of people used to say. Just buy and diamond hands and whatever else. I think the people that used to say diamond hands and hold will forever are the, I'm sorry, but are the ones that uh, probably dumped on you, dumped on us. So remember, institutions, not your friends, they are the friends, they're shareholders. They will dump on you, and that's just how it goes. Uh, VeChain and Harmony. I think VeChain, I, Harmony, people seem to love it. I don't know much about it. VeChain, I think, would be great for tracking and for uh, counterfeits. And also for uh, definitely tracking of like pharmaceuticals and things like that when there's a recall. So yeah, I can see it. The question is, is when's that gonna happen? It's been like talking about that forever. <laughs> hey dad, I always tell my family I lost six figures in Celsius. First of all, you come clean with them. So this is what's going on. This would be like family advice, okay? And then you gotta just tell them, look, this is where it's at. It's in chapter 11. I don't know what's going to happen. Probably what will happen is uh, one of two things. Either I'm going to take a haircut, 55 to 60% haircut of all my different uh, assets, or I'm going to take uh, small cash derivatives, or I'm go and I'm going to uh, have to write it out for a long-term way of two or three years as these guys come to uh, more liquidity. That's what's being discussed. There was a great uh, Twitter spaces that was done by Simon Dixon, a chapter 11 uh, expert. And they talked about this yesterday in their plan and it was fascinating. And I think that's probably the way forward. I don't think we're gonna get all of our crypto back. I think that's a pipe dream, but I could be wrong. I think what's gonna be is one, two things. Either they're gonna say, look, do you want your money? Okay, you're gonna have to take at least 50% cut. So if you had 20, if you had six figures, 100,000, we're gonna give you 50,000, but you're gonna sign some documents, some non-disclosure agreements that you cannot sue us, that you cannot talk about this and you just go away, period. If you don't wanna do that, here's what we can do. You can also sign up for this other plan where we're going to invest into Bitcoin mining. We're also gonna wait for the uh, market to, to rebound. And we might even issue some more sell token and you're gonna hold those as things go up. It might take two, three, four years, but you get all your money back or the value of that money back. The question is, what do you wanna do? I think that's probably more where it's gonna go for. Sorry, Celsius sucks. All right, where are we? <laughs> You know, says, if they didn't know you had that money, there's nothing to tell them. And that's very true. So salty. I'm salty. I'm just, I'm a little salty these days. Some, some days I just wake up on the wrong side. I'm just like, ah. But I always show up. I always show up. That's the bigger thing. Ah, Beardy. Says, at pay, they love you more than money. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> this is interesting. Kyle says you can't trade securities peer to peer, peer to peer. That's the problem with labeling things securities. Be interesting. How if everything? Well, I don't think. First of all, I think Bitcoin's going to become a security. I think uh, Gensler's made that pretty clear so far. And, I'll, and I'm I'm curious about the Ethereum part. So if that's the case, and and Bitcoin is the only one that's not a security. Where do you want to put your money into? I'm just asking. Like, because when we were talking about this yesterday, and one of the themes we talked about was freedom uh, for this meetup that we were at over at Union. And I saw why people really like, 
I mean, like not just the number go up part about Bitcoin, but it's the freedom part to get out of the system, to not be oppressed, to not have to, you know, you can actually do the things that you want to do and not be surveillance all the time. And that's really what Bitcoin essentially does give you when you, when you, when you buy it and you, and you transfer it around, you don't have to ask for permission for anybody. It's just yours. And it's the same kind of theme when people talk about their job. They don't want to have a job, which job to me, it's, that's why I haven't had a job for years because it stands for just over broke. Really what it's, a, it's just, it's a, that's the biggest Ponzi out there. But um, when you have that freedom to do the things that you want to do, it gives you that, that ability just to get out and, and live the, you know, your best life. And that's what I think draws people to Bitcoin, living off the grid, not having a job, doing the things you want to do on your time and not answering everybody. That's the big thing. So if Bitcoin isn't a security, which I don't think it's going to be, that's going to push that use case up to the, to the roof. And that's why the majority of my, my personal portfolio is heavy Bitcoin and Ethereum. So. Do clown news. There's no clown news today. What am I, a clown? Do I make you laugh? Funny, ha ha. Eh, someone is saying on YouTube that Sergey Nazarov is Satoshi. Sure, could be. I don't know. Some people said that Elon Musk was Satoshi. I don't know. Who knows? Some people said that CIA is Satoshi. You know what? The longer I'm in this crypto space, the more I become a Bitcoin maximalist. Just the truth. I'll still trade and not trade. I'll still buy and hold different cryptos because I think they have some real world use case. Cardano being one of them. Ethereum being the other one. The other ones, I'm not for sure. StormX. Theta could be there. But the majority goes into Bitcoin just because... You know, as you get older, you just see the downfall of everything. It's food for thought. Jeez, if I was a Toshi, we'd have been a lot of lot of problems. Okay, so guys, that's it. Look, 50 minutes is a long time uh, for us. But it's always fun. It's always fun to ask, answer the questions and just uh, take the heat sometimes and go from there. So tomorrow will be the DCA show. I don't know, it'll be me and James. And I don't know if it's going to be Simon. I got to talk to him. But if not, Simon will be on the show tomorrow. As I call him, uh, Simon, my Simon indicator. Simon Yu, the uh, CEO of StormX. Great guy. <laughs> I got to tell you this story about how uh, I totally ditched him uh, on the first time I met him and uh, made him pay the lunch bill. <laughs> that's a good one. Anyhow, uh, that's it for today. So if you like today's video, just need one thing. A like. That's it. It's a like. Very simple to do. And that's all. You don't even have to subscribe. I don't care if you do or not. I'll be here every day. You'll, you'll find me. That's all. So look, thanks so much, everybody. I do appreciate you for hanging out with me for almost an hour. It's awesome. Thanks so much. I'll see you on the next one. Adios.